Hello everyone, welcome back to another My 2015 tutorial. Um, we have pretty much finished our airplane here in the past lessons. We got it all modeled, we got it all textured, and in the last lesson we got it finally rigged. So now when we press play, we can see that our airplane uh, is animatable and that the propeller continuously spins because of the pre and post infinity that we added to it. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's add a little bit more interest to our scene here. This whole flat gray ground area really isn't doing it for me. So um, I'm going to actually um, create a new ground layer for this guy. So um, I'm going to select this flat ground plane, just hit delete. I'm going to create a new one, create polygon primitives, and I'll just create a new plane. I have to scale that up because right now it is inside the airplane, so I'm going to go a little bigger. Um, I'm going to make it uh, subdivisions. Let's, let's go with 100 by 100. That's a lot, but um, for terrain, kind of need some geometry to be able to add mountains and stuff like that. So um, it's be necessary. Okay, let's translate it down so where it's right at the base of the pontoons. That's good. Okay, so now we got a bunch of geometry to work with. Now we get to work on sculpting this. So um, there's a couple ways we can go about doing it. We can use the sculpt geometry tool. Um, I'll show you how that works, and then uh, I'll show you a second method that we can use. Um, so I have sculpt geometries on my shelf here. Um, if you don't have it on your shelf, you can just get it out of the menu sets, but you have to go to the modeling uh, drop downs, which is polygons. So we have animation here. I have to switch this to polygons. Now I'm in the modeling menu sets. So I need to go to Mesh Tools uh, Sculpt Geometry Tool. Go ahead and activate that one. Double click on it so we have our Sculpt Geometry options here. And there's a bunch of different options we can use in here, but I'm just going to mainly focus on these ones up here. So we have this operation which is um, that causes an indentation as we're sculpting. This one pulls it out, this one smooths it, and this one relaxes the geometry around it. So right now it says smooth strength is at 10. Let's say we're going to pull out and we want to have max displacement at something like 40 since we're dealing with big areas. And then uh, let's see here. Let's set it to the x-axis. We want to be in the y-axis. So it's going up. Um, so as I'm dragging my little brush around. It's creating little mountain ridges here. So not quite what I'm after. Um, also, if you want to adjust the brush size of your sculpt geometry tool, just hold down the B button and drag left and right with your left mouse button and that'll grow your, your brush size. And you see the little arrow on the top there. So as I'm clicking, it's causing raises, little hills or whatever. Um, you can use that to pop up little mountain ridges. Okay. Just keep on clicking until you get something interesting going on. Okay, that looks good. I don't have to get too complicated. You guys get the point. You guys create something else for yourself. Very interesting. Um, let's say though that I want to actually smooth out something like I got this up a little too high. I want to smooth this out. Um, of course you can indent it in, but it may not react the way you want it to. It kind of crumples like that. Um, that may be the look you're actually after, but if it's not, you want to smooth this out a little bit. Um, there's a smooth option here, or if you hold down the shift button and left mouse button click, it'll smooth out the geometry for you. Okay. All right, so that's all good. Um, let me show you another method we can use to sculpt this landform. Uh, so let's just jump out of our sculpt geometry tool. I'll we'll close this here. And I'm going to also close this guy here. And I'm going to use uh, just a regular translate. So click my icon here for move. Um, if I want to be in my component type mode, I'm going to go to vertexes. So vertex mode. And I'm just going to select a little group here. Now, if I try to translate these up right now, uh, not quite what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm going to open up the submenu for my translate tool. Just double click on it. And I'm going to go down until I find soft select. I'm going to turn on soft select. 
Um, you can see now that they're glowing yellow on the vertexes I have selected. I need it to be a bigger fall off radius, otherwise it'll basically do the same thing as it did before. So I'm going to bump it from 2 up to 20. Not 2 or 20. Uh, that's still not quite enough. Let's go with 50. That's the one more like it. So now when I raise this up, I get the same kind of uh, deal as the Sculpt Geometry tool, but a little bit more control because it's based now off vertexes rather than the brush size. So I can grab a couple of vertexes, push them up or push them down. I'm not just limited by uh, moving up or moving down based on the option I've set to the brush. Um, I can go through and alter this in any way I want. I can just grab big groups of vertexes or just a couple. Or I can uh, you know, grab them and push them down if I want to create like a stream or something like that. A lake. All options I can play with. Okay. Alright, so let's say that I am okay with what I got going on here for the most part. And I am. So I'm going to go to my object mode and call this pretty much done for now. I can uh, always go through and tinker some more if I want to later, but this this is a good place to start. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is add some texture in here. This right now our airplane is sitting on a, a field of gray. And let's uh, go ahead and add some light and see how that all looks. Light and shadows. Okay, so got some shadows being cast by the mountains. Looks a little interesting. Now let's uh, get ourselves uh, a texture file so that we can uh, texture this ground here. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is actually uh, go on Google and find ourselves a texture node. Now you can create yourself a seamless texture, but for this uh, lesson I'm just going to go and borrow something offline and uh, I'm just going to search um, seamless ground texture. And uh, I mean, I have it on a second window here, but here's my search here. Seamless ground texture. And I just go to images and see what they have in here. And I want one to be a, at least, I, I want it to be super small. So when you hover over the top here, you see how it says 2K by 2K. Um, those are kind of the ones I'm looking for. Um, let's go with something that's a little more rocky. Let's. Yeah, that one looks good. Let's go with this one. If this is seamless, but it's got a uh, uh, copyright on top of it, so that's not going to look good. Um, nope, not that one. Yeah, I'll go with this one. This one looks good. And it's 2K by 2K, so that's perfect. I'm go save. Images as, and I'll just put that one on my desktop. Save. I don't need to open. I just want to save it there. Make sure it went there. Yep. Okay. So I'll close this down, and now I just need to go into my hypershade and attach that texture into my ground plane. So go to my hypershade. And I'll create a brand new shader just for this ground here. Go to Lambert. Sign Lambert. Go to my attribute editor. Call this one Ground Lambert. And I need to go to Color Texture Attribute and go to File. We've gone through this a bunch, so you guys should be uh, pretty on point what I'm doing here. Um, let's go to my desktop. I didn't put it inside my source images, which I probably should have, but just for speed's sake, jump a little past that. Okay, so now we have some texture on here. That's good, except for that this texture um, is covering all the ground um, with one image. So I want there to be more higher resolution texture on the ground. So I need to adjust my UV set to be able to repeat this seamless pattern. So I'll select this uh, base mesh down here and I'll go to my split view, split, split panel view with my graph editor and my perspective view here and I'll just change it through panels, panel, 
UV texture editor so that I can adjust my UV set here. Okay. Let's go to UVs. Now, if your UVs don't look as pretty as mine, you can always adjust this um, by creating some new UVs. Going to create UVs, automatic mapping, that'll take care of it for you. Um, right now, they're all glowing yellow, and my computer's not liking that because I have soft select still turned on, so let's kill that. Okay. Now, let's scale this all up. Now, as I scale this UV set, this image goes infinitely in all directions. It goes that way, that way, that way. So I can scale this UVs outside of this one by one quadrant area and it'll just repeat seamlessly across the texture of our terrain here which is exactly what I'm after. Alright so I'll grab this middle one here for scale. Oops, not, I need to go both evenly. Alright and if you watch the viewport you can see as this UV set's getting bigger that the texture is repeating and getting more and more detailed. Okay, so now it looks better and better as you get closer or uh, get it bigger and bigger. The thing you gotta be careful though is that um, it's looking great, but when you start to zoom out really high, you start being able to see the pattern. Okay. Let's go to object mode here. Take that out of this. Sorry guys, my uh, my computer's getting a little old, so uh, doing big UV edits it, it, uh, definitely puts the work to it, so it's trying to slow down on me here. Come on, go to object mode. There we go. Now it's an object mode. Yeah, messing with a bunch of UVs when you have 100 by 100 divisions um, sometimes will cause your computer to start to use up all of its resources and start to go to like a snail mode. Um, there we go. All right, so. So up really close, it looks just great. Um, the more you zoom out, you start to be able to see some of that texture. But for now, I think that that's going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and leave this alone. And uh, just for the sake of my computer, not loving having to work with a 100 by 100 UV plane. But you can see how the texture stripes out the, more you, the larger you get it. Um, that would be something that I would want to adjust. But when you're dealing with something like this, it's just something you have to go deal with when it comes to repeating textures. Just kind of find the, the sweet spot where it looks okay and you get the right amount of texture. Also depends on how far the camera away, is away from the ground. If the camera is pretty far away from the ground, you can not have the UV set so tight. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a sky dome for this guy. We're going to go to create. And we're going to go to uh, Polygon Primitives, Sphere. Okay, I um, created the sphere, but it's on the inside of my airplane again. So I'm going to use my scale tool here, and I'm just going to um, make it big enough to where it covers everything. back a little bit. Alright, that's good right there. Okay, so I'm going to delete off the bottom faces here. And I think that's something else that might be eating at my resources, that fact I still have lighting and shadows on. So let's go ahead and ditch those. That will probably free up some power for me. There we go. I think we're looking a little better now. Alright, so got the bottom half here selected. I'm going to hit delete. Okay. Great, so now I have my sky dome. What's the sky dome going to do? It's going to be 
just like it sounds, it's going to be the sky above while my airplane is flying around. So it needs to come in just a little bit because it's still um, right outside some of the edges here. I think that looks better. Maybe push it down a little bit into the plane. There we go. Okay, so now I need to get another texture. Um, this one's going to be for um, the Sky Dome. So um, when you go to Google, just search out actually Sky Dome, is what I would search. Um, and there's lots of great little images that are specifically created just for this kind of use. Come on, Google, open up. I suppose I should just download the textures beforehand, but There we go. All right, so Sky Dome. Texture. All right, so if you go to images here, these textures right here. These are the kind of textures you want. Don't try grabbing something like this. This isn't going to help you out. Alright, so what I want to do is grab one that, and this one over here actually looks more like a starry night maybe. That might be kind of cool, but I'm actually looking for a regular old sky. So let's go with, this one here says 512. That's too small. This one's 1K, 1K, 1K. Those are all good. Um, 280, too small. That's too small. Okay, so we'll go with 1K. That, that's about the biggest ones they have right off the bat. So let's go ahead and we'll take this one here. That one looks good. Go ahead and, go ahead and save image as. And as soon as I get a little window, I'll save it onto my desktop just like I did for the last one. Yep, that one's fine. Go ahead and hit save. Alright, that's good. So I'll dump this. Need to go into my hyper shade again, and I'll create another Lambert just for this uh, sky dome. Okay. Now I need to go to the attribute editor for this Lambert. Go to the color attribute. Maybe. I don't know if you can tell, but my computer is going really slow right now. Come on, go to File. There we go. Go to Folder. You just got to find that Sky Dome. Okay, go Open. And now you can see it's on my Sky Dome, but that doesn't look right at all. Um, so I need to adjust the UVs for my Sky Dome to work for the image I just created. So I'm going to select the Sky Dome. I'm going to go create UVs, automatic mapping, and I'm going to go to, and the auto map obviously didn't fix it, I mean, I was just creating flat UV sets. Um, so now I'm going to go to my UV texture editor again, so click on the little icon here, go to panels, panel, that should be in edge mode, go to panels, panel, UV texture editor. I'm just going to select all of these in edge mode. And I'm going to use this icon right here. It says move and sew the selected edges. And I just selected all of them because the bottom half of my sphere has been cut off. So all of these edges should have a home. And if I select all of them at the same time and go to stitch, then they should all connect to each other the way that they should be. So move and stitch. And 
Now they're all connected, but they look like a little bit of a tangled mess here. That's really easy to fix. Um, all, have to go is, all we have to do is go to UV, select all the UVs, and go to this unfold selected UVs, and this kind of looks like a little Tetris button. And there we go. Now I just need to fit it over the top. of my image here. Okay, that's pretty good. If you look at the dome, now it's got a nice little cloudy texture on the outside. Uh, but if you go on the inside, it's black. And the reason why it's black is because the UVs only face one direction. They face out, usually, unless you tell them to face inward. And we can now tell them to face inward since we're going to be having them cover our airplane area. So we're going to go to create UV, or not create UVs, uh, normals. The normal drop down in the menu sets, and we're going to go to reverse. So now the clouds are on the inside. Perfect. All right. So now we got ourselves our airplane set up, and we have our sky dome and our mountains. And we're all set for actually doing some rendering. Um, let's say you want to render, but we uh, we need some some special camera created now. So let's let's create a camera that's going to be just for this airplane render. So I'm going to create a camera for our airplane. Go to cameras. So go to create. Go to cameras. And there's uh, let's see here. The regular old camera. There we go. And let's free up a little bit of resources for right now. Let's go ahead and turn off the texture so mine doesn't have to work so hard on my computer. And everything goes back to gray. I suppose this is evidence that my computer is due for an upgrade or replacement. Not quite yet. All right, so this camera, I want to follow along the airplane as it's taking off. So I'm going to, I need to be in the camera view for one. So right now I need to switch to what this camera seen so I can make sure I have my airplane view the way I want it. So I'm going to go to panels, camera one. That's the one I just created. And now I'm inside the camera view and I can adjust my point of view to the angle that I want it to be. Okay. Now if I press play, the airplane takes off and it leaves the camera behind, which isn't exactly the what I want for this particular shot. I might want a second camera that doesn't move, but I want this one to actually follow along. So to do that, I need to leave this view again. We're going to go to panels, perspective, perspective. Now I'm just going to use uh, a parenting option here. So I'm just going to uh, parent this camera to this control curve. So right now, uh, all I gotta do is the camera's already selected, so it's, it's gonna be the child of this here. So child first, shift select the parent, and hit P. So now when I select this control curve, you can see my camera lights up. Now when I press play, you see my camera follows along for the ride. Cool. All right, so let's go to our panels, camera one, let's see how this looks. Press play, and it takes off. Okay, that's cool. All right, so that could be one shot right there of my camera view just playing and taking off. Cool. 
Let's see if uh, my computer can handle having the textures on when I play. There we go. Excellent. All right. Looking good. Um, now, inside of our render setups, before we do a batch render with this, so um, it'd be batch rendering from frame 1 to, let's say, frame 95, it looks like. You'd want to go to your menu sets. Not your menu sets, I'm sorry. Your render setups. I'm click on this icon here and my render setups will pop open. Uh, I can turn textures off for now. Um, so make sure your, your path is set up correctly. Make sure you set your project. Uh, you want to make sure that you change your image format. From, well, my, my FF will work for now. Um, but make sure your frame animation extension is not single frame. You need to make sure it goes name.number.extension. That will make it to where uh, as you're rendering out all these individual images that they'll be rendered out with the, the numbers so that um, when you bring it into something like After Effects or FCheck, it'll be able to play your animations through your individually rendered images sequentially. So going down, you see it says start frame on 1, end frame on 10. We need to change the end frame because we don't want it to end on 10 frames rendered. We want it to be 95 because that's how much I want for that scene. Now, renderable cameras. Um, right now it says uh, perspective. Um, that's not the camera we're using. We're using that custom made camera I just made. So I'm going to go and click on this. There's camera one. And now we're good. Now presets. Um, do I want this to be an HD 540? Most of the time people run 1080. So 1080 will just be the default. And it'll fix everything down here below to fall into the line with the presets of 1080. Right now it's 1280. Uh, 1080 must be a little further down. There it is. HD 1080. There we go. And after this, I need to go over to um, quality. Make sure quality is okay. Unified sampling is the one I want. Um, if I want to bump this quality up a little bit to where the unified sampling is better, um, 0.25 is just what it starts at. Um, going much higher will make it to where the render times will take longer, so that will be up to you on uh, change, judging on quality, whether it looks good or not. Make sure ray tracing is turned on. If it, this is not checked, then you won't have any kind of reflections, refractions, or shadows. So make sure this is on or you, uh, you won't have a good look on your final project. Uh, shadows, um, simple, obeys light linking. Um, those are good. Um, so you shouldn't have to mess with too much over here. Okay. Now, final step, if you're happy with the way your animation looks, is all you have to do is go to... Um, oh, we have to change our menu sets, sorry. Uh, change our menu sets from polygons. We're going to go to rendering. And you just go to renderer and batch render. And then it'll render off frame 1295. Now, I'm not going to do it on this video because we're using Metal Ray. And Metal Ray will make every rendered image take longer because it's doing lots of more calculations for the reflections and refractions of the shaders. So, um, just kind of keep that in mind going forward that when it comes to how long you're going to need to render out these videos that it's going to take a lot longer than your previous projects because mental ray just takes longer. It's going to take about 30 seconds to a minute bare minimum uh, for each image. So if you have 95 of them, uh, just man imagine like you know doing the math in your head that it's going to take you probably about anywhere from like 35 minutes to an hour and a half depending on what you have going on um, to render out this 95 frame scene. So, um, yeah, I think that sets us up for this lesson. Um, next lesson, I'll have out those 95 frames rendered, um, and we'll set up for another type of uh, animation for our um, our airplane to do. Uh, maybe have it do some barrel rolls and some uh, some flying around the mountain, and we'll create a custom uh, motion path camera that will kind of do some other kind of cinematography for the, the virtual camera. So thanks for watching for this lesson, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson. All right, bye.